Hello everyone, welcome to the channel of Wall Street Mojo. Today we are going to discuss a topic on interest coverage ratio. Most of the companies have borrowings long term as well as short term and they have to pay interest on the same. So the investors need to keep a check on the fact that whether the company will be able to pay the interest on timely basis. So for this a financial ratio named as interest coverage ratio is very useful. See as you can see from the chart. Uh, Nissan has uh, interest coverage ratio of close enough to 186.42 and uh, in case of Ford the interest coverage ratio is close enough to 28.44 so seems to be that Nissan has a good prestige in the market because of higher coverage as compared to what Ford is able to. So that is what we are going to evaluate over here. See interest coverage ratio basically helps to determine how easily a company can pay interest on its outstanding debt. So interest coverage ratio can be classified as a debt ratio because that gives us an idea, a general idea about the financial structure and the overall financial risk faced by the company. See interest coverage ratio can also be classified as a solvency ratio because that helps to understand whether the organization is solvent and whether there are any near threats pertaining to bankruptcy. Now, what is interest coverage ratio? My one single question. See, interest coverage ratio is a ratio which helps to decode whether the company will be able to pay interest on timely manner. There was this guy called Mr. Benjamin Graham. He was the author of a very famous book named called The Intelligent Investor and called the interest coverage ratio as a part of a margin of safety and he explained the term by comparing it to the engineering of a bridge. See on the construction of a bridge the weight it can carry is declared as say close enough to 10,000 pounds but while the actual maximum weight limit which it is built for 30,000 pounds. So the that extra 20,000 pound it represents what? It represents the margin of safety. So to accommodate the unexpected situation, basically this margin of safety is nothing but to accommodate the unexpected situation or unexpected cases. Now in the same way, interest coverage ratio represents the margin of safety with regards to organization's interest payment. To a certain extent, this ratio also helps to measure the financial stability of a company or the hardships it can face on account of its borrowing. See equity and debt are the very two sources of the funds for any company and interest is the cost of a debt for the organization. Analyzing whether a company is in a position to pay this cost is very important. Therefore this is a very critical ratio for a shareholder and the lender of the company. Now interest coverage ratio formula. This is very important. Let's learn what is interest coverage ratios formula. Interest coverage ratio is calculated with a very simple formula. Let's dig into this. We will write interest coverage ratio, okay, and we'll put is equal to sign saying interest coverage ratio is earning before interest in tax that is called EBIT for the period, earning before interest in tax for the period divide by you will say the total interest, total interest payable in the given period. So this is going to be your formula for interest coverage ratio. Earning before interest and tax is your operating profit of the company. So operating revenue minus all the operating cost will give you the operating profit. So operating profit for the period divided by the total interest. The formula is trying to say that with what is the level of interest is getting covered up in the operating profit of the company. Let's dig into an example like Let's understand this formula better with the help of our example. Okay, so I'll come in the next sheet and let's see that what we can make some conclusion from this particular example. See, there's a revenue. Revenue is coming out from two particular uh, things, project advisory and consultancy fee. That gives us the total revenue. There are a couple of expenses. The total operating expense is close enough to 1,18,000, 11,800. And in 2014, it's 1,6,300. This is the operating income A that is A minus B and uh, less any other expenses that will give us earning before interest and tax that is EBIT which is important to us. Less the interest that gives us the profit before tax and you deduct tax you get back. So 
let's now calculate the interest coverage ratio with the help of taking EBIT as a base. So, interest coverage ratio, let's calculate this one for the year. So, just, just keep it interest coverage ratio. We have 2015 and 2014. So, we don't need to enter the year. The earning before interest and tax is 90,100 divided by the interest that is 9,200. That is 9.79 is the coverage ratio. And what was in 2014? So let's check that. Uh, in a bit divided by the interest. So it was 10.22 coverage. And in 2015, it, it, it drops down to 9.79. So the condition has not improved. The condition has deteriorated. That means the profits are reducing in terms of the previous year compared to the previous year. And the interest has also has taken a rise. So this is how you calculate the interest coverage ratio. Now, you can also calculate this is interest coverage ratio with the help of EBIT. I'll just write over here EBIT. Now, interest coverage ratio formula can also be used, can also be calculated with the help of EBITDA. Now, what do you mean by EBITDA? Very important element because in finance, this word is really, this particular thing is very important. EBITDA, that means earning before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. So, a slight variation of the above formula to add any non-cash expenses to EBIT, any non-cash expenses to EBIT will give us EBITDA and then calculate the interest coverage ratio. So, the formula for the same is EBIT for the period plus any non-cash expenses. So, I'll just copy over here, I'll say control V. EBIT for the period, you will just need to add any non-cash expenses over here and that's it. Divide by everything remains the same. So, this is the interest coverage ratio for EBIT for EBIT and the below one is for EBITDA for EBITDA. So, that is it. Now, see Basically, the, uh, what exactly includes includes this non-cash expense? See, non-cash expense is like depreciation or amortization for most of the companies. So, to understand this formula, first let us understand, I mean, what do we mean by non-cash expenses? See, as the name itself suggests, these are the expenses incurred in the books of accounts. But there is no actual cash outflow on account of these expenses. A very good example of this is depreciation. See, depreciation measures the wear and tear of of the fixed asset on yearly basis but does not lead to any cash outflow. So the logic behind adding this non-cash expenses is to arrive at a figure which will be available for payment of interest in a true sense and not just as for the book profit. So if we add this expenses, the interest coverage ratio will definitely increase. So taking the above example, we, we, we are let's let's calculate the interest coverage ratio with the help of EBITDA. So, we'll say EBIT, uh, we'll have to add back any depreciation, divide by, we will have to divide by interest. We'll put this completely in a bracket. Once we do that, the interest coverage ratio, you can see it has automatically increased. See, it was 9.79, but by increasing the depreciation, it is quite logical that the amount will go up. So, in the similar fashion, you can do, you can just do control R and see again over here, it has increased. So, if you want to copy any formula uh, in, in a row wise, you can, you can go for control R and any column wise, you can go for control D. So, financial analysts use either the first formula or the second formula, depending upon first means EBIT or second means EBIT DA. And the, 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 the they use this formula depending upon what they feel is more appropriate to them and depending upon various other criteria. See, interest coverage ratio, I'll give you of Colgate using EBITDA method. See, let us not calculate interest coverage ratio of Colgate in this particular example. Now, we, what we are doing, going to do, we'll be using EBITDA formula. Now, Colgate's interest coverage ratio is equal to EBITDA divided by, uh, divided by interest expense. Okay, we'll use the second formula. Now, in, in, in Colgate, the depreciation and amortization, amortization expenses were not being provided in the income statement and you can easily find those in the cash flow operation section. Now, also interest coverage ratio of Colgate is very healthy and it has maintained interest coverage ratio in excess of 100x for the past two years. So, also in 20, 2013, the net 
interest expense was negative the interest expense and interest in, uh, less the interest income hence the ratio was not calculated now let's make an interpretation of this interest coverage ratio see interest coverage ratio is a solvency check for the organization in simple words the ratio measures the number of times the interest can be paid with the given earning of the company therefore higher the ratio better it is so a higher the ratio means that the organization has sufficient buffer even after paying interest now in the above example of messes high earners limited uh, like as we learned has the interest coverage ratio of approximately 10 for 2014 and this means that it had enough buffer to pay the interest for nine times over and above the actual interest payable so putting it in other words one can say that lower the ratio more the burden on the organization to pay the cost of debt now when the ratio dips to below 1.5 it means a red alert for the company it indicates that it may be barely be able to cover the interest expense anything below 1.5 means the organization might not be able to pay the interest on borrowings now there are very high chance of default in this case and it may also create a very negative impact on the goodwill of the company as all the lenders will be very cautious about the invested capital and any prospective lenders will shy away from this opportunity also in 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 case the company is unable to pay interest it may end up borrowing more and they fall to debt trap i mean this generally worsens the situation and lead to a loop where the company keeps on borrowing to more to cover its interest expense now what happens if the interest coverage ratio actually falls below 1 in this case it means that you know the company is not generating enough revenue which is why the total interest payable is more than the earning before interest and tax this is a strong indicator of a default below 1 so this often leads to a risk of falling into bankruptcy i now in 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 most of the cases the min, interest coverage ratio should be around 2.5 to 3 and this much is enough to not trigger a red flag however there can be many instances where a company has to maintain a higher ratio such as a strong internal policy where the management has mandated to maintain a higher ratio and there may also be contractual requirement of various borrowers of company to maintain a higher ratio also different industry may have a different level of acceptability of interest coverage ratio generally industries where the sales are stable such as like basic utilities can do with a lower interest coverage ratio this is because they have a comparatively steady ebit and their interest can easily be covered in case of difficult times whereas industries which tend to have fluctuating sales such as like technology should have a comparatively higher interest coverage ratio here the ebit will fluctuate here the ebit will fluctuate in accordance with the sales and the best way to manage the cash flow is by keeping the buffer cash by maintaining a higher ratio what is the limitation of the interest coverage ratio see like every other financial ratio interest coverage ratio has its own set of limitation as well some of the limitations are as follow like you know looking at the ratio for a given period may not give you the true picture of the company's position as there can be seasonal factors which can hide distort the ratio and for example in a given in the, in the given period the company has exception revenue on account of new product launch which is already banned by the government going forward so looking at the interest coverage ratio only in this period may give the impression that company is doing well however if the ratio is compared to the next period it might show a totally a different picture so an important shortcoming of this ratio is that the ratio does not consider the effect of the tax expense to the organization tax expense is deducted after earning before interest and tax and tax affects the cash flow of the organization and it can be deducted from the numerator of the ratio to arrive at better see consistency in accounting policies and principle followed while preparing financial statement can also be very critical factor in analyzing the past trends and comparing industry peers while calculating the interest coverage ratio best way of using interest interest coverage ratio is to use financial ratio is to use an umbrella of the ratios at given point of time many other financial ratio ratios such as cash ratio quick ratio current ratio debt equity ratio and pe ratio etc should be used along with the interest coverage ratio for effective analysis of the financial statement this helps to maximize the advantage of this ratio and at the same time minimize their limitation thank you